The heat is gone and winter is on its way. We wanted to take you outside for our 2019 2020 winter weather forecast special. I'm Chief Meteorologist Ben Pine with the Beast from Commonwealth Dodge and this is your winter outlook. Our first alert storm team meteorologists are getting you ready for the winter ahead. Winter can bring many wonders, but also some dangers. TG Shuck will cover the impact of winter. Reed Yaden will get you prepared for the road conditions. Alden German explains the winter weather science. And Caitlin Fish debunks some of the unusual predictions at the zoo. And this is our newest team member, The Beast, a Dodge Ram from Commonwealth Dodge. And it can show you live weather conditions from the roof. The dash cam. And a close-up view of the roads from under the bumper. With our weather observation instruments on top, we can track temperature, humidity, wind speeds, and more. And you can even find the beast with a locator on our radar. You may find us in your neighborhood. Now let's get right to our 2019-2020 winter weather outlook. Let's just put it out there. This winter looks like a wild winter. Let me explain. Now one factor that can influence our winter weather pattern is the ocean water temperature around the equator. If those temperatures are above normal in the eastern Pacific, that's called El Nino. If colder, then La Nina. This year looks to be neither, or La Nada. And when we see near normal temperatures there, we often don't get a normal winter here. We can expect lots of ups and downs from one extreme to another, at times mild, then bouts of brutal cold, with of course the potential of snow, ice, freezing rain, and sleet. And when at times it does warm up, we can never rule out the potential for severe storms. So let's get to that forecast. We average about two and a half inches of snow in December that climbs to nearly four inches in January, then four and a half inches in February, typically our snowiest month, then back down to about an inch and a half in March for a normal season total of about 12 inches or a foot of snow. So what's our forecast? Well, we're calling for a respectable amount of 14 to 18 inches of snow this season. Overall, our winter forecast is leaning a bit colder than normal with above average snowfall amounts as well. Speaking of a wild winter, you may have heard of some of nature's winter weather forecasting myths, legends and folklore. Our storm team meteorologist Caitlin Fish is heading to the zoo to separate the fact from fiction. There are a lot of rumors and myths out there about animals and the weather, especially during the winter season. So we decided to go straight to the source here at the Louisville Zoo to separate fact from fiction. Predicting the weather is a complicated science, but is there any chance animals can predict it better than the storm team? We're joined by Steve Taylor, Assistant Director of Conservation, Education and Collections here at the zoo. We've got a little game to play with some of these myths and legends. <laughs> We're going to say true or false to some of these stories that a lot of folks here in Kentucky and hear about the weather and our different animals. The first one, the woolly worm. Can it predict the weather at all? I would have to say false. We're going to go full false on this one, folks. And why is that? Well, the story of behind the woolly worm, it's actually a woolly bear caterpillar. And the curator of insects at the American Museum of Natural History back in 1948 decided to take his wife up into upstate New York to look at uh, different kinds of caterpillars in the early fall. And he decided, or they decided, hey, wouldn't it be fun to see if we could look at that particular caterpillar and see if it has any predictions on the weather. So for eight years, he collected caterpillars. Uh, but at the end of eight years, nothing came of it. What about bees retreating into their hive earlier than usual? Could we say that may predict a harder or colder winter? Uh, again, I don't think that they predict what's coming in the future. So probably false on it's this It's really one. based on what's going on throughout the summer okay. uh, and the season. Uh, and it also depends on uh, weather conditions at that point in time. Now we want to get a little rapid fire here. First one will hit. Snowy owls, is their presence indicating a stronger winter? If I see a snowy owl in our area, I would just be excited. They don't typically come down So they this don't even side. come here. Okay, right. next one. I've heard pigs picking up sticks means there's going to be an earlier <laughs> winter. I don't know where this one came from. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, beware of sticks. 
Sounds Carried like by false. Pigs, right? right, that would be a bad one. Right. Okay, so the last one here in our rapid fire. Ants marching in a line versus marching kind of randomly? That has absolutely nothing to do with the weather whatsoever. <laughs> That's a chemical trail that okay. they follow. So this is false too. Correct. Okay. Now that we've debunked the myths, here's what we do know. It will be cold and we're likely to get a whole range of wintry precipitation from ice to sleet to snow. You'll have to stick with the storm team for your most accurate forecast. I certainly know one person who will spend some time inside this winter besides me, and that is our new baby elephant, Fitz. Reporting at the Louisville Zoo, meteorologist Caitlin Fish. Back to you. Thanks, Caitlin. Now let's turn to First Alert Storm Team meteorologist Alden German to show us the difference between sleet and freezing rain and the science behind which is worse. One of the most challenging aspects of winter weather forecasting is forecasting the different types of precipitation, particularly sleet and freezing rain. So what's the difference? Sleet is just a little pellet of ice. In fact, we often call it ice pellets, which fall to the ground and bounce off of objects like your car windshield or the sidewalk. That's not to be confused with the much more dangerous freezing rain, which is rain that falls to the surface and then freezes upon contact with the frozen ground. However, sleet and freezing rain are both formed by an atmospheric warm air sandwich. Here's what happens. A snowflake falls from a top layer of a cloud deck. As it falls, it encounters a layer of air that's above freezing, which melts it into a regular old raindrop. Then as that raindrop falls, it encounters another layer of air that's below freezing and, if it's thick enough, will refreeze back into that tiny little ice pellet and bounce off of the ground. However, if that layer of cold air towards the surface is much more shallow, that raindrop isn't going to have enough time to refreeze. It will land on the ground as a liquid, then a refreeze, which can create a sheet of ice. That is much more dangerous, can lead to car accidents and power outages. Yikes. So if we're forecasting sleet or freezing rain at some point this winter, you would much rather have sleet than the treacherous freezing rain. Did you know the coldest temperature ever recorded in Louisville was minus 22 degrees January 19th, 1994, just after a really big snow. The coldest temperature ever recorded in Kentucky was on the same date at minus 37 degrees. How low will we go this winter? We'll just have to wait and see, and we'll be right back with more of our WHS 11 First Alert Storm Team Winter Weather Special. In the summer, we say it's not the heat, it's the humidity. Well, in the winter, it's not the chill, it's the wind chill. Alden German shows us why the wind is not our friend when the polar air arrives. Every winter when it gets cold outside, you hear us talk about the wind chill and that it's important to stay bundled up when it's particularly cold outside. But what is the wind chill and why is it important? Wind chill is the lowering of body temperature as a result of a cold wind. Our body temperature is normally 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit and it radiates a little bubble of warmth around us. When temperatures are cold and the wind is sufficiently strong, that bubble of warm air gets blown away and our body begins to cool down. That's why wearing layers on a very cold day is important. Exposed skin has a thin layer of moisture on it that helps keep us insulated. A cold wind evaporates that moisture and evaporation is a cooling process, so the skin cools down even faster, which can lead to frostbite or even hypothermia. So while wind chill won't necessarily make things freeze faster, it will certainly make you feel much colder much sooner. I've always wanted to visit one of these mega sized salt domes. This is one of two in Louisville for the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet, Louisville District 5. And this right here is what the dreams of Doug Prophet are made of. We have Stephanie Caros here from the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet, Louisville District 5. And tell us, I mean, this is just a portion of tons and tons of salt that you have across the state and in Louisville. Yes, so this is a portion, 8,000 tons in this, in this facility here. Um, over 75,000 tons we are keeping consistently in the Louisville Mega Cavern as part of our salt reserve. Uh, so that's just a portion of all the salt that we have. And even more across the state. Yes, over 340,000 tons of salt will go to service our 120 counties in Kentucky. Have you ever run out? We have not run out. We've gotten close. Uh, that's, you know, it depends on the, the snow event, but we thankfully have not run out. And you also store a lot of brine and calcium chloride and talk about the different applications and, and how you decide what to do. Sure, so we have a million gallons of brine and a million gallons of calcium chloride as well. Brine typically, it depends on, that also depends on the weather event. So if you have, you know, if we're gonna, if we're expecting something really heavy, um, we, we try to put brine down on all of our roads before an event. Um, and then also the calcium chloride goes on top of the salt 
that helps the salt uh, as the temperature drops, helps it to break down that snow and ice that's on the roadway. Okay. So if we have a bad winter, lots of treatment that you have to do, then it actually can make the potholes worse. So your job kind of shifts into repair. Absolutely, you know, with anything, there's wear and tear. And if you have, you know, we've got trucks out on the road, we've got salt, we've got brine, that can sometimes cause, if you have a pothole that's kind of developing, it can, it can exacerbate it a little bit. Um, so our job then switches from preparing for a snow and ice event to repairing some of those, doing some pothole patching and repairing some of those, those trouble issues that either get worse or pop up during the event. Well, we appreciate your all, all the work that you do for the state. And this just looks like a mountain of salt. And it looks like a huge job, but you've got a lot of dedicated workers that train a lot as well. We do. We actually have over 2,000 what we call snow fighters. And they go out there, you know, we actually do a training every year in the fall. They, we teach them, you know, some of them are long season, some of them are newer, um, but just kind of those refreshers of, you know, what you do when you're out on the road, uh, those kind of things. We're really grateful for those folks because they, they definitely, you know, help all of us get around. I'm sure it's different for each person that you work with, but do you look forward to that mean winter or, or do you like a wimpy winter? You know, I'm hoping this winter's <laughs> mild, but I do love me some snow, so. <laughs> you and Doug would get along very well. Well, thank you very much, Stephanie. Thank you. Did you know the heaviest snow measured in one day in Louisville was 15.5 inches? This happened January 17th, 1994. A very memorable event. The heavy snow shut down the city, closing the airport and blocking the interstates. Our winter weather special continues next. Now when they start putting out the salt and brine, someone else is putting out the winter weather advisories and winter storm warnings. Our meteorologist T.G. Shuck is taking a trip to our local National Weather Service. During the winter months here in Kentucky and southern Indiana, we hear a lot about watches, warnings, and advisories as winter weather approaches and eventually moves through the region. So what's the process for choosing the right advisory and what factors come into play? The National Weather Service here in Louisville is responsible for issuing these products, so I stopped by and sat down with John Gordon, meteorologist in charge, to chat about a variety of subjects. From impact versus criteria on winter weather products, to the pluses and minuses of social media, to the pressures of accurate forecasting these winter events, Gordon talked candidly about being in the hot seat when the weather turns cold. Things have changed just a little bit. We just don't look at the criteria, an inch up to four inches in 12 hours or whatever. Yeah. We look at everything. We look at road temperatures now, webcams, all the data from the Kentucky Mesonet. We process all that information and we work on the advisory. And the advisory is all based on impact. You can get a quarter of an inch, half inch of snow or sleet or freezing rain. May not meet the criteria, but the impact is the reason we go with the advisory. When I came here, this was an older crowd that was here. This is a great staff right now that is not based on criteria. The old guys, like me, were obsessed with criteria, but now it's based on the impact, the roads, the traffic, the time of the day, rush hour. We look at all these different factors. We've got to be more on the proactive, offensive mindset for the protection of life and property. We had that event in January 10 where we went from 34 to 29. It dropped with a quarter inch of snow. We had almost 400 wrecks in Jefferson County. We're getting more of these social meteorologists, people that aren't qualified, that 14 days out are saying, oh, look at this map, and we're going to have 12 inches of snow, and it just goes through like wildfire. What do you suggest? How do you guys handle that? I would say this. You have a good trusted source. Our partners at WHAS, okay? Use the weather service. Uh, use a reliable, trusted source. We had one in Indiana where a young 14-year-old kid was a quote-unquote meteorologist and he got school, was trying to get schools dismissed. He had no qualifications at all. Please go to a trusted source so you and your family can make a wise decision. How much pressure do you feel when you have the timing of a storm that's coming in in that critical window when schools are trying to figure out what they're yeah, going to do. Yeah, my, especially the mid-shift. Let's talk about my, we're 24 seven here at the weather service. My guys on the mid-shift work their tails off on a winter storm to try to get all the products out ahead of time, taking all that information they're getting to make deadline decisions. It's crunch time. The school's got to make a decision at 520 in the morning and a story. So we're trying to give them the best possible information we can to make, they can make the good decisions. Well, but sometimes you're kind of pigeonholed a little bit because 
the stuff is literally about to move in 15 minutes after they have to make the decision, and then you're looking at yeah JCPS. JCPS, for instance, you know they always like to see it on radar in the morning to make the decision. They always feel safer versus I'm telling them it's going to come in at noon. They're like, oh, maybe we can get two hours in or three hours in. Yeah, my guys feel a lot of heat, but we practice science, service, staffing, the three S's. If they practice the three S's, the forecast and the product, the whole service will be really good. When winter weather threatens Kentucky and southern Indiana in the coming months, beware of the social meteorologists. Stay with the trusted source, the First Alert Storm Team, for the latest advisories, watches, and warnings as we keep you safe and informed. I'm meteorologist T.G. Shaw. Thanks, TG. We all know it takes cold air to make snow, but our meteorologist Alden German will answer the question, can it be too cold to snow? And I'll tell you how to stay safe around frozen lakes and ponds. Can it be too cold to snow? Technically, no. A better way to put it is that it's too stable to snow. Cold air is dense and tends to sink like a rock. That's a stable air mass. In order to form precipitation, air needs to rise high in the atmosphere and condense out its moisture. This is an unstable air mass and how clouds form. When temperatures are extremely cold, say below zero degrees Fahrenheit, air becomes so dense that it's much more difficult for it to rise and condense its moisture. Thus, snow becomes much less likely, but not impossible. Ponds and lakes like this can turn to ice. It usually takes several days with high temperatures in the 20s and lows in the single digits. It can look fun to play on, but it's best not to test out that pond or lake ice. Ice accidents happen every year, resulting in rescues and possible death. Ice is only safe to walk on when it's clear ice and at least four inches thick, which rarely happens around here. Other factors can make ice even more unsafe. White ice or snow ice is about half as strong as new clear ice. And if you see a lot of bubbles in the ice, it's more likely to crack. Remember, ice is rarely the same thickness across a single body of water. It can be a foot thick in one spot and only an inch thick a few feet away. So this winter, make sure children have close supervision playing outside, especially around ice. And did you know the snowiest month ever recorded in Louisville was January 1978 with 28.4 inches of snow. Of course, many in Kentucky and around the region remember the blizzard of 78. More than 50 inches of snow fell that winter, second most on record. We have more of our winter weather special next. When the weather gets cold, it's time to think about your vehicle. Meteorologist Reed Yaden took the beast to Commonwealth Dodge to show you the best way to get that done. In flying, we have a checklist for takeoffs, landings, and just about every other procedure. So that got me to thinking, we ought to put a top five checklist together to get your vehicle ready for the approaching winter. So Nick Goldring and I jumped in the beast and headed out. So we brought the weather beast here to Commonwealth Dodge Ram. Let's go ahead and get it checked out, go through the checklist and get set for winter. Number one, under the hood. One of the main things is uh, fluids. Uh, you got a lot, a uh, lot of different ones in vehicles today. Uh, some of the main important ones for winter, uh, you got your washer fluid and your coolant. You're going to want to check your levels on those and then obviously engine oil as well. You absolutely have to check the battery. Uh, cold weather uh, also makes it more difficult for the vehicles to start. Uh, it's important to have your batteries tested. Uh, you can do that here. It takes a matter of seconds. Item number two on our checklist, wipers. You got to be able to see where you're going. You always want to check the rubber side uh, that touches along the window, obviously. Um, you're going to look for cracks um, and dryness is the main thing. Obviously, streaks on your windshield as well when you use your uh, washer fluid. It's also going to be a telltale sign. Next on our checklist is where the rubber meets the road or in winter where the rubber meets the ice and snow. Number three is tires. You're going to want to check your tread depth. Um, obviously that helps grip the road, especially in slippery or wet conditions. And then your tire pressure is also going to play a big part in that as well. During the winter, your vehicle can quickly become your shelter. So item number four, you need some basic survival items. If you have to exist anywhere for a period of time, especially something where you can't run vehicle and produce your own heat, you're going to want to have a blanket, uh, jugs of water, uh, food, things like that. You just want to be prepared overall. Have a, a, kind of a a winter safety kit in there, and you could also put a first aid kit uh, to take, take care of minor wounds. 
And if you really want to get fancy, you could put some road flares in there. Exactly. Anything to just keep you safe overall. Last item, number five on our checklist. A very important point. Let's focus on the exhaust. If the car's running, you got something blocking your exhaust, all those fumes, they're going to go head back the way they came. And they're going to come right out the, the heater vents. Exactly. It's important to have your vehicle ready for the winter weather. I hope our checklist gave you some ideas. Now, let me show you how I winterize ahead of time. Thanks, Reed. And in case you missed it, here is our winter weather outlook recap. And our forecast calls for a wild winter with plenty of ups and downs featuring mild stretches and cold outbreaks, which could lead to a mixed bag of snow, ice, freezing rain, sleet, and possibly at times severe storms. But overall, we're leaning colder and snowier than normal with a grand total of around 14 to 18 inches of snow. You can get our storm team forecasts and alerts all the time right here on WHAS 11, whas 11.com and our WHAS 11 app and with our new radio partners at Summit Media. Thanks for watching and let's all have a safe and wonderful winter season.